What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat and we are here today with a new series that we're going to be kicking off because I feel like things have been a little bit humdrum lately and I've got to get my blood pumping one more time so that we can get back into the channel hardcore. And so today we're going to be playing Dawn of War 2 Chaos Rising. It's going to be a new series. Unfortunately, it's going to be replacing Mountain Blade. That is what I will tell you right this second. But I decided to make a popular choice here because I felt like playing something regarding the grim dark world of grim darkness and I figured it would be a popular choice as to a replacement of a, a, a well-loved series, I guess. Everybody really likes Mountain Blade, but I think there's a certain point at which we kind of have to address that it's time to let things go because we love them so much. And so we're going to start this Chaos Rising campaign, which appears to be, I have no idea to be honest, we might be up against Corn, we might be up against Nurgle, it sort of depends. Slanesh, eh, not so bad. I, t I think I'd take Slanesh out of the group because at least then you're not like gagging on, well, I'm sure there'd be all kinds of weird gagging if you went with Sl Slanesh too. Never mind, we're not going to take any of the Dark Chaos Gods, we are going to represent the Emperor. So let us be on our way. Only a year ago, the Aurelian Sector was all but doomed. The hive ships of the Tyranids hung over each world, seeding them with obscene creatures. The Tyranids were ready to feast. But these worlds are also the recruiting ground for the Blood Ravens, a chapter of the Emperor's own space marines, and they refused to leave. Veteran Targus weathered pitiless alien attacks, allowing Cyrus and his scouts to find weaknesses in our ravenous woes. While Avatus leveled his righteous fury upon the Xenos, Thaddeus descended upon them on wings of fire. And Davian Thule, the first to fall against the Tyranids, returned from death in the form of a mighty dreadnought. You led them all, Commander. Together, you fought across the deserts of Calderas, through the jungles of Typhon, and beneath the great spire cities of Meridian. You faced an implacable enemy, and you triumphed. But there is a truth more implacable than any tyranny. A new threat will always emerge. Once, Planet Aurelia was the Sector's crown jewel, home to billions of souls. Then came the Warp Storms. They pushed Aurelia into a new orbit, encased the planet in ice, and swallowed it whole. For a thousand years, the Warp held Aurelia in its terrible grip, depositing untold horrors across its surface. Now, planet Aurelia has returned. It should be a barren ball of ice, but a signal is coming from its surface. A blood raven signal. A call for help. Yeah, I think we can all agree that that's probably... There's no way this is not a trap. So a planet comes out of the warp after, like, what, a decade or a hundred years? I didn't... I, they said a century, they said a decade at the beginning. But anyways, it falls out of the warp, and then all of a sudden, like, this random signal comes from the surface. Commander, this is Gabriel Angelos. We have detected a Blood Raven's distress signal coming from somewhere nearby. If there are Chapter Brothers in need, provide support. But be wary of a trap. Angelos out. Our drop pods have scattered, Commander. Something is interfering with the navigation systems. We should locate our other forces and regroup. For the chapter. They're gonna try and tell me to jump over this, but I'm gonna say to hell to that, and I'm gonna blow it up, because that's way more Space Marini. We need to get past this wall if we are to locate the other drop pods. Use your jump pack to get across. Yeah, I sort of use it. You're like, eh, put, 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 like turn on the jump pack for a second. Supply crates replenish explosives and other expendable items. Destroy those crates to uncover the supplies. It appears as though in this expansion, this is going to be a 100% blind playthrough. I just figured I'd tell you guys that. I've never played this expansion ever. I didn't even have it when we were filming the vanilla version. I think I picked this up on a Steam sale shortly thereafter for like $4 for all the games, and I have no idea what's going to happen here. I remember how to play the game and everything, but... Guardsmen, what are they doing here? 
I wonder. God, Space Marines can be so naive sometimes. Evil wins because good is stupid. Hold your position, Space Marines. I said hold. Lower your weapon, Guardsmen. We do not answer to you. Gun them down! Technically, Space Marines don't answer at all. They are that guy. I can clear those bunkers with explosives. Attacking them with standard weapons takes much more time. I was gonna say, technically, Space Marines are those guys that, like, never answer their phone, and they're never available for text messages or whatever either. So they don't answer to anyone. It's like equal opportunity offender right now. They are that friend. Hold on, Cyrus, no. Oh, Cyrus, no, I didn't mean to do that. No, I didn't mean to blow you up. It's already begun. This is how all my playthroughs go. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Something sinister is going on here. No loyal guardsman would ever fire on a space marine. I doubt these traitors were alone. I wonder what's going on. The planet's only been in the warp. I mean, you know, that always keeps people loyal, doesn't it? The imminent threat of being molested to death while choking on phlegm and dying of diseases. More traitors ahead. <laughs> well armed. My scouts wear light armor, Commander, so we had best make use of available cover. Now you will have noticed that I imported all my characters from the previous playthrough. If you're new to the Nerd Castle and you never saw my first playthrough of Vanilla Dawn of War, you're going to want to go back and watch that first before you watch this one, trust me, because all the characters have these little intertwining relationships, they all know each other, they all know each other's histories, they all talk trash to one another, they all like each other or dislike each other for varying reasons. And so if you want to be in on the storyline, you want to understand where they're coming from, Warhammer 40k is not so great at explaining background a lot of the time, like sometimes it can feel very very daunting to jump into the lore, but all of these characters, we've played about a 20 hour campaign with all of them, so you'll probably want to go check out the vanilla playlist before you watch this one, I'll put it in the description down below to make your life a little bit easier if you do decide to do that. If you're returning, welcome back, I'm pretty happy to play, be playing Warhammer 40k again, it's been a while, it's been a long long while. Commander. The immediate area is secure, but this unpopulated glacier is an armed camp. Did this world not just emerge from the warp? If so, someone else got here first. Traitor guards. Just when I was starting to respect them. Hate them if you will, but do not underestimate them. It's true. Avidus had just started opening doors for them and everything so they could walk through. He would buy them drinks at the bar, and now it's all ruined. They'll never get another brewski again. Not on Avidus's check, anyways. Here they come! Get ready to fire! Traitors! And grenade to the dome from Tarkus. Quickly, while Tarkus has their attention, we should engage them at extreme range and focus our fire. Tarkus, no! Stop incapacitated Tarkus. Commander, use a stimulant kit to heal him from a distance, or manually revive him. I think I'll heal him from a distance. He doesn't strike me as a touchy-feely type of guy. Nah, never mind. We'll get touchy-feely. We'll get hands-on. We'll go ahead and give him a good rub down, see if that makes him feel better. My thanks, Commander. Our drop pod took out a air fire on final approach. Only I made it out, and just barely. And still, you made yourself a target to break that ambush. What would the Codex say about that? The tactical squad shall draw the enemy's fire, thus allowing the Devastator squad to attack from a position of strength. Ha! That it does! This whole situation looks like a trap, but there is still a distress signal transmitting from somewhere nearby. We had best locate its source quickly. You know there's gonna be a whole bunch of traitor marines here. There's no way the game is called Chaos Rising. It would be Chaos it would be called Chaos Falling if Chaos had failed to take the planet. But nope. I'm going to since we were using, I believe, our main characters a tank, let me look at my hotkeys here and figure out who I've got. I'm gonna put Cyrus back behind this cover. I'm gonna put Avidus in right there. We'll put Tarkus in right here. What does Tarkus have? He had like a taunt or something, right? Capture the Blood Raven's distress of bacon. Okay. So, the distressed bacon is over here. We will go ahead and calm it down with our mouths, because that is the only way to calm down a distressed bacon. Standard Imperial Locator Relay. Transmitting a generic distress signal using Blood Raven's codes. Hmm. Just enough to lure us in. Coordinates 9.6 by 11.12. Launch barrage! Artillery, clear the area! Run! Oh god! 
flee for your lives. Oh, that devastator in the, the back. called in that attack from hiding. Cowards. We should extract and bomb this ice pile from orbit. No, we need to secure an approach before we can launch an extraction. Only logic engines can track and target drop pods. Those systems depend on a broadcast array. Then let us act like space marines. Find the array and destroy it. I think I might be on the side of an exterminatus right here. The one thing you don't want to fight. I mean, Tyranids are pretty bad, but Chaos... Chaos sucks. Chaos is going to be rough. I mean, I don't know who I would pick if I had to pick between the two. I'd rather just fight the orcs because the orcs are kind of that prototypical enemy. I can advance on that turret in tactical formation without being suppressed. Once in range, I can disable it with a frag grenade. That. That. Or we could take the guy that goes invisible and he could go invisible and then we'll go over here and we'll throw stuff at it. At yeah. Take my pack pack. And there it is, satchel charged. Goodbye. Down, Down it goes. Target. And so now I'm gonna back up, we're gonna put Tarkus Down. in. Is that a new effect, that explosively entering cover thing? I feel like it's kind of counterproductive to set off a giant explosion right before you go invisible. Like it seems to be one of those showcases of your power that would just give you... Oh no, I hit the wrong hotkey. These guys are not in the order that I'm used to. Usually Cyrus is number four for me, Avidus is number three, and Tarkus is number two. And I think I can only reassign it in between missions. In case you're wondering, I'm going to be fumbling with the keys a little bit on this mission just because I don't like the way that they've got me assigned. I'm going to have to move them around the moment we get up out of here. It's okay, though. For now, we'll just deal with it. I'm going to send the commander and Tarkus ahead. Let's send the commander to there. I have the commander spec as a tank from the previous playthrough, in case you were wondering. He's going to be able to take all kinds of damage. I don't know if we still have his Terminator armor, though. He ended with Terminator armor, as did Tarkus. Securing it will give us a defensible fallback position should we need it. Ow! It will also allow us to reinforce our squads. How can we serve? Be vigilant. Let's go ahead and send them back in again. So if you wanted to know how I spec these guys from the vanilla playthrough, this is my imported party, even though they look a little bit different. They've got like new helmets. That's because these guys are veterans, and so they should have different helmets. Like Coronet and everything. That's cool. That's really, really awesome. That wasn't from the previous game. That didn't happen in the previous game when you updated them to veterans. But anyways, I'll show you some of the spec choices I made. Also to remind myself. Open fire. Targeting now. Targeting <laughs> Shot him off a mountain. That's what he gets. I'm going to go ahead and throw a satchel charge on the building so that we're nice and clear to get in here and take over the orbital relay. Or the command point, as it were. That will do, scouts. I'm going to have the commander take care of it, and we also want to make sure that we have defensive positions ready to go, because this looks like a prime position to get a sack from. Let me go ahead and put a nade on that. I'm going to send Tarkus in, and they can handle it. And so there it is. What do they want me to do next? They want me to continue forward, I guess. Okay, so it looks like this is actually going to be a pretty extended mission, which is good, because I'm always slightly worried... Yeah, that's no problem. They should be squishy as hell. Guardsmen aren't known for having a hard chin on them. What I would like to do... Let's go ahead and scout ahead. I always try and use... So basically the way that we inspect people in the previous playthrough, if I can get it in, in between all the storyline elements. Who is that? A spot? Oh, damn it. Shoot him. There we go. Gotta make sure that that doesn't happen. But anyways, the way that I have people spec'd is I have, sp I have Cyrus completely and totally spec'd for espionage, so he's gonna be using bombs and sniper rifles throughout the course of this game. I have Avatus all out DPSing. I think I put every last point of his into ranged DPS. I think I did something similar with Tarkus, but then I also backed off of it and put it into his tanking spec so that we could double tank with the commander and with the force commander and with Tarkus. And so I'm gonna have to take a look. In between missions, I'll probably like the, epi the second episode, we'll take a look and try and figure out. Okay, and so I'm gonna use them to scout, obviously, because since he's specced into stealth anyways, we might as well. I think spotter units look specifically a different way. Traitors before they call in a strike. Which traitors? Fire away. Keep advancing to avoid the artillery. Oh god damn it. Okay, well <laughs> we're being rained down death upon us. Which is not out of the ordinary. Oh, these devastators in the back are about to have a bad day. Yep. A day filled with explosions. 
What are you guys getting hit by? Oh, they just dropped a building on his ass. That's never a good day. And now they've been exposed. Alright, whatever. Let's go ahead and Force Commander just jump pack on in there. We're going to take Tarky Boy. I'm going to drop him on here, and he's going to hit it with a frag grenade. I am hoping that we'll get our Terminator armor back. I don't know. And so these guys right here, we'll go ahead and throw that out. Blow up the Tarantula turret. Over on this side, let's just go ahead and amass some fire. He had a suppression attack. Fosis, or I'm sorry, Fosis fire. That is the worst way to pronounce that word. There are a lot of ways to pronounce that word, but I think that might have been the worst in my eminent vocabulary here. I've decided to say Fosis instead of Focus, which is embarrassing and odd. But anyways, I believe I buffed his abilities up. We'll go through these anyways. Once we get a few moments to like kind of quiet down and get out of the line of fire. Gentlemen, you want to grab these supplies for me? I don't know if I can call them gentlemen. Maybe, maybe not. I think we're going after... I'm having trouble keeping an eye on where I want to be here. It looks like there's a command point around here somewhere, but I don't see it. Either way, we're going to try and go for a fury rating on this one, if we can manage it. Let's go ahead and press forward. Where is Cyrus? Is he mixed in? Okay. Cyrus is mixed in with everybody else. I should probably... Did I not capture that? Or is it... I thought that got destroyed. Hold on here. Let me see what I can do with the big FC. Can he capture this again? Oh, apparently it never got captured. Alright, well by the time he gets done getting that captured, I'll explain. So everybody has abilities. Our Force Commander has to victory, which is a charge that allows him to just annihilate everything. He basically charges, wipes out all cover in his path, and kills enemies that he runs into. Assault Jump allows him to jump up into the air and land on people, which is great because he has a lot of girth. There's nothing like a two-ton human being, a genetically modified killing machine landing on top of you to really kind of ruin the remainder of your day, and that was an accident. I hit two keys at the same time. Keep advancing to avoid the oh, ass. Alright, they're gonna try and keep me moving here. I'm gonna try and avoid getting myself wiped out by artillery fire. It does appear to be a little bit more difficult. I need you. I would love for a grenade to get thrown. Cyrus is losing men right now. You can see a readout of how we're doing in combat up at the top right corner. Very, very poorly would be the answer to that because we just got pincered right there, which is horrible. They do regenerate outside of combat, but it's going to take us a little bit of work to get certain people back into the fray. I'm going to go up this way. And until I get reused to... We'll have them hang out right here. God, we are just getting blasted right now. Are they using las cannons on us? God. We are taking some serious fire at the moment. Stop engaging in melee combat. I want you to be ranged only. There we go. And so now what we need is to wipe that out with a grenade. So let's go ahead and nade that. And then once we get back to these beacons, we can replenish. If you see these little pips next to each soldier, I'm doing this for the people that are new to the series, in case you're wondering. If you're one of the old-school veterans that's been around the channel for a while and you understand how this game works, sorry, I'm going to spend the first couple episodes just talking about random stuff and teaching people how the game works, just in case. But basically, the way that it works is each squad has these little pips right here. So you can see that Cyrus has lost a guy. If we have these little orbital beacons, we can actually restore his troops through there. And so it's in our best interest to go ahead and grab this orbital beacon. I'm going to send in Cyrus with his boys, and they're going to go into stealth. I'm going to have them step into here, them step into here. We're going to throw a ooh, explosive onto there. That kind of backfired on us. Lucky Grenade managed to expose our scouts for a second. They got grenade launchers. They're going to be bouncing us all over the place. The Guardsmen have a very interesting selection of items which can be incredibly obnoxious to deal with in both this game and in the other Warhammer 40k Dawn of War. Yeah, I think those are definitely LAS cannons. We are definitely taking some serious fire. Let's go ahead and capture this. I don't have any of my support items that I had in the previous episode. Are you serious right now? Like, stop. <sighs> There's also a big delay in between when I'm clicking and when things are happening. 
we do have no choice though. We have to spend some time here. They're still getting knocked around, even though they're way away from the blast point. I suppose we can just assume that it's the concussive blast of the whole thing. Last cannons are going to be a definite problem. It looks like they're rushing us and trying to get into melee. God, this is actually a lot more difficult than the previous campaign. I'm actually kind of surprised how much more difficult this is for a first mission. I don't know if they expected you to pick this up right after you got done playing the last campaign or what, but damn. They are bringing some heavy weaponry into this situation. We're getting hit by LAS cannons, plasma guns, basically everything that is the antithesis of Space Marine armor. We have cumulatively like no armor advantages right now. We're going to go ahead and my keybinds being ruined is also messing with me a lot. I'm going to go ahead and jump into there to cause problems. And so as you can see, that knocks them. Oh, I just broke my own cover. That was a, tor that was a horrible mistake. I've ruined my own plan. And so now we've got... Let me... We're going to go ahead and buckle down right there. We're going to rush them to make sure that this gets done. Down he goes. Put a shoulder right into that solar plexus. And the guardsmen are making the only sound that I like to hear guardsmen make. The sound of dying. It's what they're good at. You gotta let them stick to their skill sets. Imperial Guards not really known for doing anything. That's like the Imperium basically uses them to hold the line and die until somebody that can actually handle the problem shows up. And I realize that sounds really, really dismissive of the Imperial Guard, but there's only like four or five groups of the Imperial Guard that are actually good at anything. I'm gonna snipe that right there. You stealth to sneak on up in here, and then we'll throw a satchel charge on top of that tarantula turret. They're going to scatter, obviously. But since we have no cover, go ahead and start there. Let me take Tarky Boy and we'll drop him into cover right there. We'll put Avidus in right there. Oh yeah, we do have problems here, don't we? Okay, well let's move up Tarkus. They'll support him with whatever they can. And then let's take Tarkus and put a grenade on that tarantula since the Force Commander is very, very suppressed. And we have to destroy this communications array for one reason or another. I wasn't really paying attention. I mean, we're Space Marines. We blow stuff up. It's what we do. Our skill sets are really sort of limited to, like, blowing stuff up, killing things, reducing things to a smoldering heap of gibs, jibs, whatever you want to call them. Then we should proceed to our extraction point and destroy any other traitors we find. I agree. So let's go ahead and snipe them out of here. It looks like they've nerfed Sniper Strike. A sniper Strike used to clear everybody out of a building. Now it clears nobody. Over here with Tarkus. Let's put a grenade on that tarantula so it can't cause a problem for us. I think we can make the throw from right here. There we go. Sometimes the game is not going to choose the most logical path to get a job done, in case you were wondering. I'm going to go ahead and put him into kill mode since they don't seem to want to fall out of that bunker right there. And then we'll advance with everybody else. For honor, standard firing mode. Yes, coming out of stealth. Pull them out of stealth. We can either go down that way. Let me open up these crates too, because we are looking a little bit low on abilities. And I do want to keep myself primed. Especially with Cyrus, since he's like your number one utility guy who's really, really great at killing large groups of people and blowing up tanks and all that other fun stuff. Basically, Cyrus is the 100% most useful person in my group. Just based on the way that I've built him. Let's go ahead and throw a satchel charge on that. And then step back because they're dispersing towards us. Put Avidus in right there. Force Commander, we're going to jump him on into that spot. And then we'll charge this to blow up their cover. And so there it is. They no longer have those large dumpsters or whatever the hell those were. We used to have one of those that we would haul out to the dump for my construction job. That's basically, it looks like a dumpster to me. I would think the Imperium would need a lot of dumpsters. It seems like they have a lot of people who would just be like throwing shit away and just making a giant mess and you know, shitting in rivers and all that fun stuff. It doesn't seem like it's a society that's really primed. Oh, we're going the wrong way. Well, damn, maybe I should turn around and go the other way then, or at least pay attention to my objectives. Let's go this way then, now that I'm paying attention. Oh, never mind, we have to go around this way. I knew it. I just tried to auto-pause the game for some reason. Oh, you got hit with a grenade at just the wrong moment. That's fun. 
Let me go ahead and... God, those nades. There we go. Disperse them a little bit. It looks like the grenade has hit the bunker. We can take position in the bunker too if we had wanted to, but we don't want to because it's smelly and stinky and nobody loves that bunker because it's had awful, disgusting Imperial Guardsmen in it. I love the Imperial Guard. They're actually my second favorite army after the Orcs, who are my number one Du Bois, as they prefer to call themselves colloquially. I do enjoy Orcs the most, but after the Orcs, Iggy's. That's why I give them such a hard time, because I play Iggy's too. Go ahead and throw grenades on that. And goodbye. Down they go. That'll clear that building out. Let's go ahead and keep on moving. And I think to the southeast, we should find ourselves at a equitable point for escape from this whole debacle. Tarkus report. Reposition. This is Abatis. Understood. Going Chapter there now. Be vigilant. I'm gonna put... Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of disperse people for right now. I did have two suits of Terminator armor. There's a reason I've been saving this save since we stopped our last playthrough. We are exposed here. Watch for an ambush. We Forget that. We are the ambush. We are the Emperor's Marines. Ambushes mean nothing. Movement up ahead, brothers. It's okay, we got that covered. We got that all good. Maybe you should help out with that, guys, considering you're like four feet away. There you go. Just a little assist right there. Just a little assist. I'm gonna put him in annihilation mode. We're also gonna flash grenade these guys. Really? He got one-shotted instantly? Jesus. Okay. Go ahead and take them out. Definitely packing some serious heat that's giving me cause to think about my tactics. On this side, I'm going to put a grenade on them since I feel like it'll disperse them a little bit quicker. Oh, they dodged it. That's new. Okay, they used to just stand there and get grenaded. Well, that's not going to be a strategy that I can rely on. Why are we losing so badly in melee to Imperial Guardsmen who are like the remedial D minus students? Throw a med kit out because I don't have a choice, and then we'll jump on into this fray. See if we can bust him up a little bit. There we go. Why would they say for the Imperium when they're evil? These are Chaos Guardsmen. How are they recovering so Yeah, we're losing a melee fist fight with guardsmen. How embarrassing is that? Somebody capture this thing because I think it's replenishing all of their man. In melee. In melee, man. It's been a while since I've heard somebody say melee. Okay, let's get everybody replenished. Considering that fight went very, very poorly. Okay, so in this game, it appears as though the enemy is able to utilize the command points to their own benefit, too. So there's a lot of new adjustments that they've made that are going to be things that we really need to be aware of as we play through the game. Because obviously, I can't rely on the AI to do the same dumb stuff that they did previously. I'm going to drop a remote charge right here because I think I can get... Oh, no. Okay, I thought I was invisible. Yeah, get the hell on out of there. What are you doing? I don't have any of my orbital strikes or anything either. It's a little bit weird that it has you import your characters, but you don't have any of your gear and you don't have any of your support items either. For example, Tarka should be in Terminator armor. Force Commander should be in Terminator armor, and he should be using a Thunder Hammer, as I recall. I don't exactly know why they've decided to... We need to tactically advance, and we need to throw a grenade right there. And so there's grenade number one. That's a pretty good throw. He threw it in between the rungs. Not bad. Not bad. And then we'll put another grenade on that. I probably shouldn't have sent Avidus first, but it'll be okay. And then our extraction point is right there. So let's just make a run for it. 
Run! Run! Oh man. So Tarkus, you, you, Force Commander, Tarkus, go ahead and advance onto there. I'm gonna have Force Commander jump on in to guarantee that they're no longer holding positions or that they have any cover because that's really their only savior right here. We're also being flanked, which has forced Tarkus into melee combat, which is not good, but he seems to be doing okay. Let's try and avoid any further grenadings. And we'll advance Tarkus to there, we'll advance Avidus to there. Actually, you know what? Have the scouts grab the extraction point. I think they do it faster than everybody else anyways. And if there's something we could use right now, it's the ability to do it faster than everybody else. Usually, not a good skill to have, but in this case, I'm going to make an exception and say, absolutely, let's do it faster than everybody else. Let's get everybody mashed around this orbital beacon so we can get the hell out of here. We should expect a counterattack shortly. Agreed. Still, this is a defensible position. We hold here. Okay, so let's go ahead and put Avidus into... Thunderhawk Talon Alpha inbound. Hold position. All right, so there's a Thunderhawk on the way. The squad should take position in that structure. This whole area will become our killing field. How can we serve? I actually think it might be a good idea to put Tarkus back up in here too. If you're wondering about the dots, the yellow dots are okay cover, and the green dots are really good. Down a barrage to soften us up. Prepare for an assault. Well, if they hit us with an artillery strike, it's gonna blow you out of that building and insta give you. So I would prefer not to do that. Saw something land over here. Oh, it's artillery. Okay, I got a little bit nervous. It's a lot longer for a first mission than I expected. I expected like a light tutorial, and then you know, it's actually like a full-fledged mission. Probably could have gone around and gotten all of those. I do try to do it, but... Ah, well. Can't be helped. Okay, and so here they come. Force commanders on melee. And so let's head on out to the butchery here. Those grenades are really, really brutal. Force Commander is sans his Terminator armor right now. I'm still going to play him like he has it, though. It seems as though we're doing okay. Oof. Why is he still suppressed? Come on, get out of there. He's being suppressed by one guy. That seems unlikely. Let's go ahead and put a nade over there. So for a killing field, this does not appear to be... I mean, we're killing, but seriously. We need to step it up on the killing. Let's make it a little... Let's get a little bit better at it here. You know what? I think it's time to... Oh, no! Force Commander's taking a little bit of damage right now. I'm going to use him to get out of there. Because I need him to be regenerating. And I think I've got everybody into a structure now that they can be defensible in. I don't see any other supplies except for that one. Can you guys shoot that right there? There we go. It's combat supplies. That's not very helpful. Are we good? Ow, oh, balls. Ooh, I hope that doesn't blow up the building. Okay, it didn't blow up the bunker. That's good. <laughs> they blew up their own guys, although that's not out of the ordinary for... It doesn't really... How much HP does it have? Oh, it's got plenty. It'll be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> Your artillery's a little bit misguided right now. It, it's without the Emperor's grace, I suppose, is the way that we would put it.
god. There are a lot of enemies causing us a lot of boo-boos. It's getting noisy too. Okay. God, there's just so many of them. He's gotta go. That sniper is killing us. Dude with a las cannon. Causing us major, major issues. Wow. This is pretty intense for a first mission. Damn. This is a pretty gangster first mission. These guys are begging for a grenade, so let's just do that. Should have a grenade ready to go again. Oh, damn. Look, they are breaking off the attack. What do you expect from traitors? Courage and honor? They can break off whatever piece they want. We're ready for them. The reward for treachery. Retribution. Also, maybe a couple melta bombs. And, fury are rewarded with victory. and so there it is, ladies and gentlemen, our first mission out. It looks like there's a new weapon right here. I don't know who uses it. It's a grenade launcher. It's usable by Cyrus. Okay, I don't know if that was in the first game. I know he had flamethrower, sniper rifles, and something in the first game. Maybe he had grenade launchers there, too. There's something we haven't seen in a while. We got ourselves a little bit of a level up going on. We had, I think we had, in our first playthrough, we had been capped out. Probably halfway through the game, so we didn't level up for a very long time. Well done, Commander. Those guardsmen have paid the price for betraying the Emperor. We must discover who these traitors were and how they came to use a Blood Raven's code. But we will have to investigate that later. The second strike team I assigned to investigate Aurelia has sent a distress signal. Sergeant Thaddeus and his assault marines are already prepared to deploy, along with the dreadnought Davian Thule. This signal could be another trap, Captain Angelos. This call is a full message, Sergeant. Review the signal on your planetary display and provide whatever support you can. Okay. And so I'm going to break the episode off right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in the Nerd Castle for the first episode of Dawn of War 2, Chaos Rising. I look forward to seeing it rise, which is not a thing that I'm normally privy to say. But anyways, I'm looking forward to playing this series through with you guys. I'll see you in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and I do.